All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Red versus Blue Let's Play with a very special, you know, approach or methodology to it today. My name is Jerry Ozier. I am the director of cybersecurity education at ThreatGen and also the content creator at Simply Cyber. And I am super pumped because today we're stepping into the Red versus Blue cybersecurity simulation platform, and I will be playing the role of the defender of the blue team, uh, SOC analyst of the CISO, but. I'm approaching it exclusively by applying the CIS critical security controls 18, which used to be the SANS 20, if you've, if you've been around for a minute. We're gonna be doing the CIS 18 and following it strictly. And my goal for today is to outlast the red team operators as they penetrate. We're gonna really test the efficacy of a compliance framework. So let's hop into it. We're gonna be joined by Clinpo Dungeon, CEO and lead developer at ThreatGen. And we're just going to have a good time. So let's let's go. All right. Hey, Clint, how you doing there? Live from Miami. That's right. I'm at the S4 conference and it's Miami. And I thought I'd be happy to be here, but it's actually more hot and humid than I wanted. So I'm kind of happy to be in my room right now nice soaking up that air conditioner right <laughs> that's right I'm a, I'm a typical hacker <laughs> all right well hey chad i see you guys loading up here definitely say hi I, I appreciate you spending time with us really quick so i can just show you this is the cis critical security controls the top 18 you can see they go from 1 to 18 and they are incrementally in order based on priority of how you're supposed to be implementing them right so we start with one we go to two now i want to say i'd have to look at this uh but there's three kind of tiers so i think it it used to be with the 20 it was like one through eight was like your absolute tier one you got to do this and then nine through 14 was like these are great to have and then the last four were like all right you, you go for the gold here like penetration testing's the last one and typically you wouldn't do that first right so we will be implementing these controls and having a good time talking in chat today as we play the red versus blue platform. So let me just jump into it right now. Why is, why is it not allowing me to click through? Hold on one second. Oh, come on. Here, let me refresh the screen. I had a lot going on as part of my prep work here. Here we go. We're going to do single player. We are going to be playing against the AI today. We will be blue team. And let us protect the manufacturing plant. I feel like that that's our, our... Actually, you know what? Let's do a randomly selected event because we're a CISO. This is our blue team uh, security objectives. We're going to eliminate all vulnerabilities, increase our threat intelligence score to 100, or outlast the red team. These are our win conditions. For me, I'm trying to outlast the red team today. That's my goal. Okay, this is the uh, interface threat gen, red versus blue. I will be explaining it as we go through. And Clint, if you see anything interesting in chat, let me know uh, because I'm I'm going to be doing a couple different things here. Okay, so it's our turn. Cool. I'll be your mod. Thank you very much. So it's our turn. So guys, the way that red versus blue works, if you don't know really quick to give you an orientation, on the top left is our budget. This is our um, how much money we have you know, to run the information security office. Here are our analysts and engineers that work for us. We are the CISO and the blue team operator. This is our action tree right here on things we can do. We spend money and people to activate this action tree. Also is our network topology. You could see we've got, you know, the internet coming in. We've got kind of our IT infrastructure stuff, our end user kind of environment. This is like, Carl and accounting and Clinton R and D. And then this is our ICS OT stuff over here. This is where the manufacturing happens. This is where the money is made. So going back to CIS 18, you know, the very first control here is inventory of control enterprise assets and software assets. So we're looking for um, inventory of assets. And the reason that CIS wants us to do that is because if we don't know what our assets are, how can we protect it, right? We, we would just have these major um, shadow IT gaps. So 
the first thing we're going to do here is, oh God, um, we're, hold on, I want to see with CIS if the firewall, uh, data protection, secure configuration of enterprise assets. I guess, oh God, we're not going to get our firewall in place until malware defenses maybe. And that's where EDR is going to come in. Maybe we can make the argument that data protection is a firewall. But let's do our asset inventory. That's going to use one person, three turns. We still have two people to, to apply work to. So um, policies and procedures, is that... Let's see if policies and procedures is actually mentioned in here. Policies and procedures isn't mentioned, but I bet you if you dug into each of these, they would have something to the con... Uh, something to the effect of all of these things require policies and procedures. So we are going to do that. And that's going to take two people and that uses all of our money. Okay. So we're going to grab that 46 seconds. We're going to end our turn and we're going to just kind of feel out what our CIS 18 is. Let me just do one quick thing real quick. Just had to do one quick thing. Okay, so we're going to end the turn here. Let's see. Hey, Yula Chua. Good to see you. All right, let's start the turn. Okay, so we still have all of our assets working. Our analysts are working on our policies and procedures and our asset inventory. So I'm going to pull this over really quick, right? And looking at data protection, let's look at our skill tree really quick and see what we can map um, or see if we're missing anything when it comes to um, inventory and uh, data protection. Okay, so let me look really quickly. Uh, ooh, data protection is a pretty generic one, so we can do a lot in there. All right. Install sim... That's really around EDR type stuff. Video surveillance, that's not really, that's not really uh, asset inventory either. Uh, okay. I think we're good. I mean, we're gonna have to do a gateway firewall for data protection to get the network segmentation. Assuming that network segmentation isn't one of these CIS controls uh, access control management, network monitoring and defense. This is where our SIM's going to come in. Yes, the CIS controls are prioritized by their number. So you're supposed to do one first, then two. In reality, you should be doing like one, two, three, four, five, six, all kind of in parallel with each other. But the idea is that you're supposed to get kind of the foundational stuff, um, your initial implementation in place before you start stacking up these additional ones. Okay. So let's gonna go ahead and stop or, or end our turn since our analysts are still working on all these things. All right, that was a good question. All right, so let's see what we did. We're still waiting. <laughs> it takes a long time to do asset inventory people. And this is actually pretty real. Uh, there's a couple different ways to do asset inventory. You can, what? Hold on one second. You can you can take a scanner and scan the um, the network. You can um, send a spreadsheet out to people and ask them to fill it out. There's a, there's a bunch of different ways to do it, and some have more efficacy than others as far as you know being able to capture stuff. But at the end of the day, people will bring bring in their own technology from home. People will will uh, try out a new piece of software or something like that. So you're never really going to be 100% with asset inventory. And remember, it's temporal, right? Things go away, things come on. You know, you might do an asset inventory using a scanner and Clint wasn't at work that week. So his machine, his, his renegade laptop isn't showing up. So you got to be mindful of all those things. All right. You can go to CIS. Um, I think it's cissecurity.org to get more information on the 18. Clint's the new Carl. That's right, Clint. All right. So we've got our asset inventory and our policies and procedures completed, which is fantastic. So on the surface, we've done controls one and two, and we're doing all right. So now let's look at 
data protection, secure configuration of assets and software, account management, access control. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. So data protection and secure configuration. All right, let's take a look at what our options are. Again, um, CIS 18 is perfect if you are a small business or you're an organization that has no cybersecurity, like you're just kind of winging it. CIS is very, very approachable. It's very easy to, to um, comprehend for both practitioners, if you're like a junior analyst, and for the business to wrap their head around because it's straightforward. It's like, here, do these things and you're a little bit better. Okay, so data protection. I'm going to do gateway firewall. That's a basic protection. And let me look here. You could argue that encrypt network traffic is going to be good data protection. Um, strong Wi-Fi is good data protection. Might want to do both of those. Security awareness. Where does that show up on the 18? Number 14. Okay, so we don't get to security awareness for a while. Looks like CIS is focusing more on uh, technical controls. All right, so back up. I need that. Vulnerability assessment. Um, I would normally do vulnerability assessment, but I have learned when you work in an industrial control system environment, you can, you can damage operational technology and industrial control systems if you run a vulnerability scanner without first um, having safe methods and understanding what pieces of OT might get knocked over. It's, 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 it's um, quite interesting to know that when you run a vulnerability scanner for the first time, you should definitely coordinate with all of your um, here, let me do this. You should definitely coordinate with all of your um, engineers and field workers and, and management to tell them that you're going to be doing this, when you're going to be doing it, and what you're going to be scanning. Because if you knock something over, you need to be able to pinpoint that that was related to the scan for two reasons. One, to identify that you shouldn't be scanning that asset. And two, that the asset isn't under active attack by, by an adversary in your environment, right? So you want to do it in a very controlled fashion. Okay, so we've still got two people here and we got 30 seconds. We're working on data protection. I'm, I'm going to do oh, video surveillance isn't really data protection. All right, I'm going to do implement strong Wi-Fi. And I'm going to do wireless network. Encrypt network traffic. There we go. Interview. Okay, hold on. Um, is interviewing a good option? Hey, Karen, it's good to see you. Um, let's see. Is interviewing a good option? When you say interviewing, Karen, are you referring to interviewing staff about their about their technology and softwares that they're using, or are you are you talking about when you're trying to identify when you're about to run a vulnerability scan? Okay. Hey. Also, guys, we've implemented our our strong Wi-Fi, our gateway, and looks like we're still doing encrypting network traffic. So going back to our SANS 18, we've got data protection and secure configuration. Okay. We've done our assets. So let's do, okay. I think, hold on. I want to segment the network, but let me see if that falls under different control. <sighs> network. Okay. So network infrastructure management and network monitoring and defense are 12 and 13. You could make, I feel like you could make an easier argument that that's network segmentation versus data protection. I feel like data protection is more like inventory of your data, knowing where your data assets are and stuff like that. So we are not going to do network segmentation, despite the fact that I really want to. I'm trying to, I'm trying to adhere to the 18. So let's do this. Hmm. SDLC? No. This is hard, uh, Clint. <laughs> Trying to adhere to the to the um, CIS baseline. Okay, data protection. Is it, um, does it have to do with uh, probably the, the prerequisites? Don't let you do that. We can adjust those so that you can properly adhere to that. No, I mean, I'm, I'm a little curious about um, uh, data protection, CIS controls. I'm, I'm, I'm Googling it really quick. I want to see what this actually says. It says, develop process and technical controls to identify, classify, 
secure handle, retain, and dispose of data. So it's basically, it's asset inventory for data, basically, which makes sense because the first two are hardware and software. So it's essentially asset inventory for that third piece. So just kind of going back um, in here, I feel like maybe we've done what we need to do. Um, actually, you know what? If I'm Go ahead. I was thinking about backup processes because that's protecting data. Right? I kind of feel is... like that um, we probably we it, the the CIS controls are kind of cryptically embedded into some of the actions within the game, and mm -hmm. I think it would be really good to align the actions better with the CIS controls, so mm -hmm. that people that are trying to do proper cybersecurity, it's very if you're having a problem seeing that alignment, then other people yeah. are too, and so at, at a minimal we can put um, labels in the descriptions that say, hey, this helps you comply with this CIS control. But even better, just go ahead and, and, and adjust the actions so that they do so. The problem with that is that that's not the only cybersecurity standard that people want to comply with. So if you make the game comply with CIS 18, then you also have NIST standards or NERC SIP standards that people want to comply with. So then it becomes a little bit kind of it's befuddling to, to figure out you know yeah which complies with which standard and what should i be complying with and then you end up confusing people yeah it's a good point i mean i could see um you know kind of a mapping right here right like like maybe somewhere in here like just a crosswalk yep. mapping or something like yep. that but and we've I, done I that just, yeah before yep yeah so i did sdlc thinking that was the closest to um data protection. I saw someone in here mention USB security. I'll do one of those too. Uh, and then we'll move on to looking at, we'll agree that controls one, two, and three are done. Um, here, let's deploy USB. Yeah. Security. Data protection is a very broad action, right? And it's in, in number mm -hmm. three, CIS number, CIS number three, it's very broad and ambiguous. So like, what do they mean by data protection? Is it data at rest, data in transit? Yeah. I really feel like it's, it's, it's kind of overall inventory and classification of data it, it's really getting to that classic information security like that's a, that's one thing that i haven't spent a lot of time on like the difference between information security and cybersecurity, and what the history of information security is so i'm going to yeah. do this usb security just to finalize um data protection now i'm i'm kind of uh, caught between the AD server and the engineering workstation. I do feel like um, the engineering workstation is critically important, but the data you could argue is on the PC historian. So I'm going to drop the USB on the PC historian and the term. And then we're going to say, I'm sorry, guys, you weren't looking at that. I dropped it on this right here, this en enterprise engineering workstation. I am playing against an AI right now. So it's an active adversary um, red teamer who's coming at me. So, all right. So USB security implemented. This is good. Our network traffic is encrypted. Our Wi-Fi is encrypted. So this is perfect. So I feel like, you know, we're seven turns in. We've gotten through three of the controls. Now we're looking at a secure configuration of assets, account management, and access control. Now, Secure configuration, I'm not sure there's really... In order to get to secure configuration, we need to unlock some stuff. Um, like, where is it? Where is it? You can see right here, system hardening. This is this right here is secure configuration. So in order to do that, we need to do a vulnerability assessment. But before we can do a vulnerability assessment, we have to do ICS safe testing methods. Yeah because we don't want to damage our OT when we do this. So let's go ahead and do the safe testing methods with the idea that we will be doing the vulnerability assessment after this so we can get to the secure hardening, which will be control four. And then we need to get to account management and access control, which is also going to be kind of unlocked by doing the vulnerability assessment because we need to do um, changing default creds, which is access control. Changing the default creds, which is access control. Um, 
there's weak passwords that we're going to end up finding here in the environment that we'll need to change. So this is, this is like, this is interesting, right? This is the legwork that you need to do to invest, to be able to properly execute on these controls. You can't just do one, two, three, four in chronological order um, without doing some of the legwork and lift. Okay. So I'm going to end the turn. By the way, I just want to point out here really quickly that we have already deviated from some of the approaches that I personally would do as a seasoned cybersecurity professional, but I'm really interested to see what happens by strictly adhering to the CIS controls. So let's so end our turn. interesting okay? there. Yep. What's interesting is if you look at, um, so vulnerability management is also very broad. And, you know, you, you kind of think, okay, well, does vulnerability management, does that include vulnerability assessment? Yes, I think so. Um, but in reality, you know, vulner vulnerability management should start at the very beginning so that you can start to know where you need to patch and, and things like that. But also then you go down to number 18, which is penetration testing. And a lot of people wrongly, uh, incorrectly, combine or, or or merge the term penetration testing and vulnerability assessment which is, should not be done so just absolutely thoughts. and and i also want to point out from a practitioner perspective you know for bang for the buck getting vulnerability scanning going early helps you find hardware assets and software assets on your network because if it sees it it can tell you yeah. The, a, the assets there can tell you the operating system. It can tell you if there's vulnerabilities, obviously. Um, these are all very valuable. Like I have found, you know, network cameras that no one knew about. I've found, you know, renegade access points that people didn't know about. So vulnerability scanners are really valuable in trying to understand what your, your network topology looks like. Okay, so we've implemented so, um, software. Yeah, two things. Number one... Um... Well, we'll just say there's a question here, actually, that I think is pretty important, you know. Oh, my God. Screen there. Uh, that's a good question, Jess. Let me look at this really quickly. Um, oh, AppSec, IRSec. Yeah, yeah, most of these are... Most of these are identifying protection controls if you map them to the NIST CSF. Um, I guess the one you could argue is number 13 network monitoring defense I, yeah. I feel like that that would be more associated well, with incident response no no well i think network monitoring is is, is what leads to uh, to incident oh, response right yeah so you have your network monitoring set up so you know you have to go to an incident response yeah. I, but i think to yeah to your point so number one vulnerability assessment should be part of your asset inventory i think that, that it, all, it all starts right there and then number two um, yeah, I think network monitoring should be set up and it's prior to an incident happening to your point, Jess, your question. Yeah. And, and, and great point. And right there, number 17, which is surprising because like almost the last control you put in is IR. And I, I really feel like having some SecOps capability is, is, is important. You know, again, it's not like when you reach 18, your 18th control that you can like go on vacation and be like, well, this organization secured. Like this is the basic, 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 basic found foundational stuff. Okay. So we're going to continue. Now, remember I just did ICS safe testing methods so I could do a vulnerability assessment so I could get access to this uh, secure configuration thing. So let's do vulnerability assessment. We're going to go ahead and end the turn. I can't wait. Like I'm getting like itchy not having network segmentation in place, guys. Okay, so let's start the turn here. We still don't have any visibility into the environment. Our um, vulnerability assessment is running. It's going to take two more turns, so we're going to wait on that. Going back to our CIS 18, we are doing we're going to be doing secure configuration. So this this is an example. Okay, guys, this is a real life example. I am doing vulnerability assessment right now so I can get to do the ability of um, patching my systems, updating firmware, doing that secure configuration, right? Changing default creds. But it's going to take me two more turns or two more days or two more weeks, however you want to extrapolate it. And I still have one asset waiting to work. 
and I can't apply that asset right now to do anything around secure configuration. So like, let's look at the next one, account management access control. Okay, so let's look at this. Let's look at this. Looks like we lost Clint. Um, anything around access control or access control, two-factor authentication, that's an access control. I'll definitely do that one, but I can't, that requires more than one person. So we can't do that one. Uh, okay, so I see us, we still haven't installed a SIM, by the way, but ICS vendor certification. This will allow us to patch our, um, this will allow us to actually patch our stuff. So we need to do it as part of our approach to getting to secure configuration. So let's, let's do it. And Josh Mason, if Josh Mason wants to play um, opposite me uh, when we do this uh, live, like next week, because I'm, I'm streaming, Clint and I are streaming every Wednesday, in case you guys haven't noticed, every Wednesday at 1130, we're doing a Let's Play. Uh, and we're trying to mix it up. Like this week, we're doing CIS. Uh, last week, I was the red team. Two weeks ago, I was blue. So we can mix it up. And if Josh wants to come on and be the red team and stream from his side, we can definitely make that happen. Uh, let us know in chat if that's actually something you'd like to see. If you'd like to see me eviscerate Josh Mason in this game, I'd be happy to. Okay, let's end our turn. Got our main firewall here. Okay. So now we, we're we still waiting on our team to work. This is part of what makes the simulation so effective, guys. It, it's not like you click a button and it's done, right? Doing vulnerability assessment takes time. You got to get the scanner in place. You've got to coordinate with um, the, the business on, hey, let's run our initial scan okay, now let's run it for real. Like, let's actually evaluate what the risks are. What did the scanner find, et cetera. So I'm going to just use this Harden RDP. Oh, that's a good point. Harden RDP is there. That's a good point. Maybe we should focus on that next. Let me see. Harden RDP. It's one person, two turns, and it's not lit up right now. Clint, is there... Do I need to do something to get Harden RDP as an option? Um, let's see. Which environment are you in? It, it may, uh, if you don't have a terminal server, you won't have the option to harden the IDP, RDP. Oh. Okay. You don't, you don't have Perfect. a terminal server, so you don't have to worry about it. Yep. Nice. So I got, I got set up nicely because, um, because like, it's just not in my environment. Least, least, yeah, and it doesn't uh, have to be the yeah it doesn't have to be the terminal server but since I designed the levels I know that there are no assets currently within your environment there that are using RDP so okay and I just want to give a shout out to Muhammad here Muhammad thank you so much I do agree that installing VPN is access control and in order to get to it I need to segment the network which is what I really want to do. So um, high five to you, Muhammad. I am pumped that I'm going to be new in network segmentation as soon as possible. So let's go ahead and end the turn. I can't wait to segment this network. Christopher Word, I see you in chat. What's up? All right. We completed our vulnerability assessment. You can see now we've got all these default creds. We've got... Uh, you know, just all sorts of problems. Now let's go back to our CIS 18 and see if it's okay. So Muhammad, the VPN is good, but securing the configuration of these assets is a higher priority control according to CIS. So as much as I would like to get that VPN going, I need to uh, start hardening these assets. Now I can't do all of them at once. So I need to prioritize. So Engineering workstation is a uh, priority. So we're going to, hold on. Is patching a different control than secure configuration? Um, uh, malware defense, data recovery. It should be. Provider. It, is, it is in red versus blue because I think it should be. No, I agree. I'm just wondering if it gets bundled in. Um, they might even consider it part of vulnerability management, right? Number seven, continuous vulnerability management. Yeah, I think so. 
And I don't yeah. agree with that. I don't think that you should just loop everything into vulnerability management because there are so many aspects to different vulnerabilities and different ways mm -hmm. of, of, of addressing them. It should not be lumped into one control. Well, I'm going to make an effort at secure configuration. So default creds on your enterprise firewall is a terrible uh, configuration. So we're going to fix that. Um, let's look at these assets over here. Uh, update antivirus. That's not really a configuration. That's vulnerability management. All right, hold on. I'm looking for all of the misconfigured. Here we go. That's a misconfiguration. Hold on a second. This is a mistake. They did get one thing really right. When they said what? continuous vulnerability management, continued vulnerability management is a perfect way to say it continuously. Because what you find is, especially in the red versus blue simulation, is that when you clear out all the vulnerabilities, if you go back and do a vulnerability assessment again, or especially a pen test, you quickly find that more vulnerabilities pop up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Vulnerabilities are a temporal thing. And the criticality of the vulnerability is also temporal, right? If there's no exploit for it today, it's not as big an issue as if it's on GitHub tomorrow, right? Okay, so I I went ahead and did uh, change default uh, credentials on three of the systems. So I've applied all of my assets. Uh, so I can't do anything more. There is, I think, only one more this this device right here is the last one with default cred. So once we do that next turn, as far as I'm concerned, we have met control four and we can focus on five and six, which is going to be network segmentation to get to that VPN. So let's go ahead and end it. Yeah, Josh, this is a really cool concept. Um, I like applying this idea. We might even be able to do this with other frameworks, Clint, um, as, as just show ideas. Yep. Well, okay. we do have other. So yeah, we definitely do have plans actually on the roadmap to mapping standards like CIS-18, NIST standards and things like that, just like you mentioned earlier. Nice, I love it. Look at this guys, we got a $10,000 bonus. Look at, we've been reporting to management that we're following a framework where we're doing our job, we're doing it well. We're training junior analysts to be able to help us out. We're using 100% resource utilization. Heck yeah, thanks for the 10 Gs. Okay. so. We've got our three assets. What we're going to do right now, this worked out perfectly, is I'm going to segment the network, which is two people for three days. By the way, network segmenting is a massively difficult control to implement well at a large organization. It's very disruptive. But once you get it in place, it's very cool. We're going to set the network. We're going to segment the network and we're going to do this last default um, misconfiguration. And we are just absolutely owning it. Okay, so after I end this, we're gonna be done with control four. We're gonna be working on five and six basically with the VPN. And since our assets will be committed for a few turns, um, we're gonna start looking at continuous vulnerability management, which is patching, because we're already scanning right now. Okay, let's end the turn. Oh, you can see that we have 1% threat intelligence too. Threat intelligence is us detecting threat actors in our environment. If it gets to 100%, we win the game because the threat actors get thrown in jail. Um, I'm not trying to go for that with a win condition. I'm just trying to outlast the storm using a framework. So hopefully that's good. We'll keep an eye on our P&L too, which is what this value is. This is basically how much money the company is making. If things go down, if data is being exfiltrated, if ransomware is involved, the P&L goes down. And if it goes all the way to the zero, that means I get fired because I suck at my job. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right. Did Karen ever uh, clarify her question? I see you in there. Hey, Bob. Uh, Clint, there's a question in there for you from Christopher Word while I map out my next yeah, move. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the, the answer is yes. We, we Right now, it, it was heavily ICS and OT focused because that's the indus industry that I primarily have been focused on, and that's where I come from for the last 15, 20 years. But yes, we are already adding more levels and environments like banking, healthcare. So we'll be adding those very soon over the next several weeks. Um, we just had to get this base built out and rolled out first. And now that it's built and rolled out, um, I'm focused heavily on creating new environments. I'm the level builder. Yay. The CEO level builder. Great. 
Hey, everybody's got a role or two, right? Okay. We wear multiple hats here. Yes. All right. So I'm going to be getting into that VPN. Uh, Two-factor auth, I don't have the access or the resources to do that. Um, so I'm look. I'm beginning to look at, I guess, enforce strong passwords is also access control. So we've got to do that one. There's not even a question. Okay. Let's just check how we're doing on our roadmap. We've done one, two, three, four. We're working on five and six right now and with looking for opportunities to do patching if we uh, don't have access control stuff and we have free resources. Not free, but resources that are not committed to working on anything at the, at the time. Right, here we go. It is really cool, LinkedIn user. This is ThreatGen Red versus Blue. It's a cybersecurity cyber simulation platform, which allows you to both hone your skills and also test frameworks out, get educated on frameworks. All right, so we created that Against an active password. adversary. Yep, exactly. We are playing against AI right now that's attacking us. All right, so we've done... Um, what are we doing here? We're still waiting for network segmentation so we can do the VPNs. So we have one person. Let's look at our uh, skill tree really quick and see if there's anything around access. I don't see anything around access. So the next thing is continuous vulnerability management. We still don't have a SIM right now, by the way, folks, but continuous vulnerability management is, is patching. So let's start patching. We're going to focus on our engineering workstation. And we're going to let that fly. By the way, this CIS framework is actually a really good use of uh, budget and resources. We have, we yeah. like, we're 15 turns in. We still got, well, I guess I got a $10,000 bonus for being good. So, but you still had okay. 19. By the way, uh, Karen clarified her question there. It's on screen. Is interviewing a good option for asset discovery? Yeah, it's, it's okay that, <laughs> It really depends on your company culture. So if you are asking, hey, like, who? tell me about your assets. You know, you might have someone who's like, oh, I know better than IT. Like I have, you know, like I brought in a home router so I can have a little wireless cloud for me here so I can run multiple assets. So they, they're not compelled to tell you the truth necessarily. Also, they may not even think. Like say they bring in a, a Google Home device and stick it on their desk. Right, because it, it's it's cool because they can say Google play, you know, my playlist or whatever. When you ask them about assets that they have, that thing is sitting on your network, but they might not think that that's something that's even worth mentioning. So it's not always um, negligence. Sometimes it's ignorance. So interviewing is a fine option, but it's not a great option. Uh, technical solutions are much better, and then having standards saying you cannot put virtual assistant devices on our network, period. Um, that's where you start getting into uh, policies and standards. That's a great segue okay. to the next question. How do you identify which framework to implement when there is no framework in place? I'll answer that in one second because I've got 40 seconds to make a move here. Uh, oh, no, no. I, I've already made my move. Um, so I'll just let the timer expire. Can you throw that question back up? What? How do you identify which framework to implement when there is no framework? Okay, so when there is no framework, uh, Christopher, what I would say is it really depends on the size of the business and the industry that the business is in and what country it's in, right? So for me personally, if you have no framework in place and you're a smaller business with like limited staff, then you want to look at CIS. CIS is a great option. It's very easy to wrap your head around. It at least provides some direction and uh, holistic scope for you to get your arms around. If you're a larger organization and still don't have anything in place, I like NIST cybersecurity framework. You're going to be able to get more budget. You're going to have more staff to help you. And by larger organization, like to me, less than 1,500 employees is a small organization uh, where you could do CIS to start and then pivot into NIST CSF, fifteen hundred to like you know uh, up, it would be NIST CSF appropriate. Um, yeah, so that's what I'll say on that. All right, let's go. 
CIS is perfect. If you if you're new to information security, maybe you're an IT person and you've been asked to do cybersecurity stuff and you want to actually put in a program, CIS is perfect because it's not really complicated. It's 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 pretty straightforward. All right. Um, it does have its some gaps to it, um, which we can talk about if you want. All right, so system patch, network segmented. Oh, God, thank God. All right, so now that we're segmented, let's install VPN because this is our final kind of access control looking thing. Oh, two factors here too. Okay, let's do two factor. It's not even a question. That, that committed a lot yeah, of our resources, yeah. people. It was expensive. They put the CIS puts that late in the game, I think. Yeah. So as far as I'm concerned, once these two actions, VPN and two-factor, are completed, we have done controls five and six. So we are one through six looking good, and we can start focusing on patching individual things. Um, audit log management is not really going to map into a control in the game. You kind of get it by... Uh, as part of EDR and stuff like that, which is what I would co consider malware defenses, honestly. So I don't know. Let's take a look. We got, we got the continuous vulnerability management figured out. That's going to be patching. So let's look at what would be mapping to um, audit log management. I, I really don't know if there is much, um, Clint, is there for audit log management? No, no, and oh. that's something I definitely want to kind of put in the game, but we kind of figured, yeah, no, we, we don't have log audits or anything like that. That's something we need to work, figure out how to work in. RDP is now available, apparently. <laughs> so I don't know if. Oh, did you? Oh, did you segment your network? Yeah. Now yeah, that you have a, you probably have a terminal server now. Okay, well that makes sense, guys. So even making modifications to your own network can introduce additional needed controls that weren't relevant before. Oh my gosh. Okay. So let's keep going. I'm a little nauseous that we don't have visibility, but that's okay. Our assets are completely committed still. So hopefully we're going to get that VPN next turn. No problem, Karen. Glad you decided to spend some time with us this morning or this afternoon, depending on where you are. All right. So we've got VPN in. <clears throat> we've got one person, one asset, and we need to start doing system patches. Okay. All right. So what is this device? This is a PLC. That seems important. And this is an HMI, also important. Let's do system patches on the HMI. This is just us committing to Vulner continuous vulnerability management control seven of the CIS framework. And if you're just joining us, we are playing red versus blue cybersecurity simulation platform. I'm the CISO at a manufacturing company in a simulated environment being attacked by an active adversary. And I am committing myself to blindly follow the CIS security controls um, religiously without any really additional context of what I think is the best practice based on my professional experience. We've done controls one through six and we're kind of dabbling with seven right now as control uh, six is completed. Okay. So we just finished our two factor authentication. So we are riding pretty. So let's keep doing our patches. And no sign of the adversary yet, but I think that might happen a little bit once we start putting our threat monitoring in place. That's the problem with the order of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the CIS 18. And that's the problem of a lot of follow things blindly. It's all situational because, you know, some people say put in your threat monitoring first. Some people say put it in later. It just all depends on your situation. I think what you're going to find is that once you start implementing threat monitoring, that we're probably uh, infected already. Yeah, that's what I think is going to happen. I, to me, like, uh, whatever. I'm. This is the point of this stream, but it is giving me a little bit, like, I'm a type A control freak, and I'm getting, like, an upset stomach right now about some of the decisions I've been making. <laughs> As a red right, teamer, so that makes me happy. <laughs> so, to me, update antivirus is not really continuous vulnerability management. That's more malware defenses. So, I'm just going to keep patching 
Um, let's see. System hardening. That would be vulnerability management and secure configuration. So let's do that. Patches. Patches. Okay. So having done that, we will actually have quote unquote completed continuous vulnerability management. We'll continue to check in as vulnerabilities are discovered because it is continuous, but let's start thinking about audit log management. Now guys, real quick, audit log management is making sure that your endpoints, your network devices, your cloud systems, that they're all pushing telemetry, which is basically just glorified log files to some centralized repository, typically your SIM, in order to have uh, correlated, meaning that like, you know, something that happened on this endpoint and this endpoint and this endpoint, you can see at the same exact time if it was happening or if like this one happened then this one, like that's what correlation is and aggregation. So you have all of those files or all those logs in one source. So they're nice and um, referenceable or cross-referenceable. That's what audit log management's all about. And I tell you right now, if you don't do good audit log management, or if you don't have audit log management at your organization, like your endpoints aren't pushing logs anywhere, they're just capturing logs on their device. If you suffer a ransomware incident, or really any incident, but a ransomware incident, the very first thing that the incident response team is going to say is, where are your logs? And when you tell them you don't have any, before they even respond to the incident, they will install... Um, Sysmon or other kind of logging agents on all your endpoints before they can even start working because without logs, you have no clue what's going on in your environment. It's critically important. Okay, so let me just finish this uh, patches on this guy. Oh, I don't have any resources. Okay, let me look with our last 40 seconds really quick just to see if there's anything around log management. I don't think there is, but we're gonna harden RDP too apparently. Pen test, system hardening, antivirus, install antivirus. Okay. Okay, so there's really nothing around audit logs. So we're just going to, we're going to take a win for that one. So we'll, we're done with eight. Email and web browser protections. Now this is important. Webmail, uh, email is a massive uh, attack vector in the environment. In fact, you could argue that that should be like first because you can set it up and it can continue to deliver value as you get your arms around your environment. Okay. Yeah, typically, Muhammad, you would have a separate system for log aggregation. It would be a SIM um, or, you know, sometimes larger organizations will actually have the log files go to two places. They'll go to a SIM and they'll go to like some kind of data historian that's immutable. That way, if a threat actor gets in and wipes out your logs, you have at least some immutable set of your logs to, to recover from, or not recover from, but to, to look at. Okay, so we've got two people. What did we just complete? Oh, system patching. Okay, and we're hardening some systems. We're starting to look at email and web browser protections. Again, I'm not 100% sure that there's something that maps directly into my environment that I need to worry about for email and web backup. We're gonna harden RDP in a second, but I wanna, before I commit a resource to that, I wanna look. Okay, so I'm under the impression that controls eight and nine we get for free. So I'm feeling good about that. So now I'm looking at 10. Malware defenses. So we're doing seven and 10 malware defenses and continuous vulnerability management. We do have this new access control issue that we need to take advantage, take, take care of right here, this hardened RDP again, because access control is way back here and controls five and six. So we need to make sure that we're, here, here's a fact about CIS guys, or really any framework, when you put a control in place, you're now responsible for maintaining that control. It's not like you set it and then forget it, right? You need to revisit things. And this is why you need to be very deliberate when you choose technologies in your environment or controls in your environment, because everything you add is now another piece of responsibility and accountability for you and your organization. Business people love stroking checks and buying fancy, shiny objects, but every single one of those fancy, shiny objects requires a human to tune, to maintain, to actually do something useful with. And 
that part is not always accounted for. And it's, it's frustrating because I have seen, I've seen plenty of organizations with like really expensive technology, even technology that does something that they already have capability for and they just buy it. And then it just sits there and the vendor's happy because they get paid, but it's, it's really, really lame. All right. So let's, let's update. Well, hold on. Let's make sure we don't have any system patching. System hardening, AV, AV, uh, AV, and install AV. Okay, so let's install AV on this one as we move into our malware defenses control. Enable endpoint protection. Yeah, Bob, Bob. We have, um, we have EDR solutions, but I think we need to get SIM first before we can take advantage of that. Um, let me let me confirm that. All right, system harden. This is good. If we do a sim, where's the sim? It's down here. Security All right, so if we do this in event management for those that ask. Oh, okay. So we're going to install a sim now because it unlocks EDR, which is a critical control to have. It basically it runs on the endpoint. It's endpoint detection and response. It is a host-based thing, and it will provide telemetry and notify you if malware is happening. Um, it'll quarantine the malware. EDR is very valuable. In fact, EDR is so valuable that there is a huge industry that makes EDR solutions. You may have heard of Carbon Black. Um, you may have heard of, what is it? Um, not Cobalt Strike. What, what's, the, um, what's the other EDR, the Cobalt one? Oh, uh, it's it's you know, CrowdStrike. Wait, uh, oh, CrowdStrike. Yeah, CrowdStrike. Yeah. I, I always get that Cobalt Strike, CrowdStrike. So CrowdStrike, uh, Sentinel One, uh, Microsoft Defender. It, it, it's a massive multi-billion-dollar industry because it is so important to control. So I'm going to go ahead and install a sim. And while I'm doing it, I'm going to continue to patch systems. Or not patch, but here, there's a patch on this guy right here. So this is another one, right? This controller is a higher valuable asset in my environment, but according to the CIS, I should be patching things first. Um, or no, 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 I mean, excuse me, hardening. The patching's fine. So I am going to, hold on, why am I confused? I feel like, I feel like patching is what I'm supposed to do even though I don't want to do. So, <laughs> Secure configuration and all right. So patching's under continuous vulnerability management and updating antivirus is more around malware defenses. That's what my argument. So even though I want to do this one, I'm going to do this one right here. All our assets are committed. Let's wait. Bit of trivia for you. Mm -hmm. CrowdStrike was founded by, and, um, this, and this, this, the CEO is George Kurtz. George Kurtz was one of the three original authors of the original Hacking Exposed book series. Oh, very cool. That is a fun fact. They also, First, all of the three original authors came from a company called Foundstone, which created the original Windows uh, kind of a vulnerability scanner, kind of like InMap. It was called SuperScan. And they were bought by McAfee. I remember Foundstone. That was like back when, that was back when the uh, the Cali distro was called um, like Praetorian or oh, something like that. No, 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 no. So it was called Backtrack, um, and it wasn't even out by back then. This was early. This was uh, mid to late '90s, early 2000s. And back, so Cali Linux was originally called Backtrack. Yeah. What am I thinking of? No, no. Then what was the what was the Defender distro? There was one that had like a Gladiator logo. Do you remember oh, that? Oh yeah, yeah. I feel yeah. like I don't think it was, off was on that. Yeah, but I don't think that was the offensive security guys. That was no, no, called, no. That's what I'm saying. Uh, they made a defensive one. I feel like it was like Praetorian or something, or or something kind of Roman Legion sounding. Okay, so while you're checking that out, we got two minutes here. We are working on malware defenses and continuous vulnerability management. So let's see. I think we got our SIM in place and now we can start doing EDR. Yep. Ooh, malware defenses. We need to change that name of that game. Instead of endpoint protection, we need to change it to EDR in the game. Remind me to do that. Okay. Greg, you're listening. Make a card for that, please. <laughs> 
Put a card, so put a ticket really, in jail really, for that. Really quick, okay? We're, we're focusing on malware defenses right now. Really quick. Um, we have the choice between EDR for endpoints and network sensors um, for the network segments. I'm going to prioritize the network sensor because I'm going to get more value, more bang for the buck, unless there is something that talks about network network infrastructure management, network monitoring and defense. Damn it. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> so I will not be doing a network sensor. I'll be doing EDR to align with control 10. Um, Greg Jones, malware defense is AV. Yes, you can think of malware defense or EDR is a evolution of uh, AV. Microsoft Defender is a good option. Um, Christopher Word asked, what's a good option for um, a SIM for SMB? You could check out, if you're in Office 365, Microsoft has one called Sentinel. I haven't played with it much, but it natively integrates. When I talked about correlation, aggregation, enrichment, all that stuff, Sentinel does it all for you if you are in a Microsoft shop. Now, let me do EDR really quickly. Um, oh, crap. Hold on one second. I got to get this before I run out of time. 11 seconds. Damn it. Talking. Um, and then let's do this. Oh, Probably not exactly what I would want to have done, but that's okay. All right. We are still... We are three of three, and we are focused on EDR. So let's just put EDR everywhere. It's going to take a lot of turns, but... Okay. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We probably have about 20 assets. We can do three EDRs a turn. So that's like six turns. Um, we need to hire some contractors. I know. I wish we could hire contractors. All right. So I'm putting on EDR right on all the network devices. Now I'm going to focus on OT. Okay. Okay. That's all set. That's all set. Let's do... Uh, let's focus on these two that have vulnerabilities since we, <laughs> we, we, they're, they're a little bit higher risk systems. So, but let's do this really quickly. And just to see. So I have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 more devices that need EDR. This control, this control right here, control 10 is a very expensive from a time perspective. We still haven't done security awareness. We haven't done network sensors. We haven't done IR yet, but we're getting there. I'm going to just take a moment and share with you what I think a gap is in our environment right now. Okay. Just looking really quickly. First of all, I think security awareness, I disagree with SANS or I, I disagree with the CIS critical controls that security awareness is this far down in the stack. With zero trust architecture, with your end users working remotely or from all over the place, with them using BYOD, their own cell phones, their own home network, all this stuff, phishing emails, security awareness is, is what I would consider an absolute critical control in helping defend your organization, I would move it way up, like to like three or four, if I had, if it, if I was in charge. Clint, you want to comment on that? Yep. I'm just nodding in agreement because I mean that's the whole reason why I have focused my entire career from the from the like three or four years into my career. Even though I was a pr practitioner and a consultant, I got into teaching as well because yes, I mean. Users are your front line of defense. They are also the weakest link in the security chain. And to this day, all of your major malware campaigns, the way in is through things like spear phishing, malicious USBs. So user awareness training is clearly still lacking to this day. And maybe that's the reason. Maybe because it's so low priority in these models. Jeez. Possibly. Irritates. And remember, this used to be SANS 20 or CIS 20. 
we didn't lose two controls. They just collapsed two controls into um, two existing controls. I don't remember exactly which one. I think I think vulner continuous vulnerability management, like Hachi may have been a separate one and they collapsed it, but make me spicy. <laughs> okay, so let us end our turn and hope for the best. We're just on an EDR deployment um, rampage right now. Compromise asset detected. Okay, this is good. So we just put EDR on this. Um, this is compromise. We do need to activate IR. This is going to take a full turn. So we can continue to do uh, install EDR on all these things. Especially now I'm focusing on devices that are on the same network segment as this compromised machine. So we're continuing to do our controls while actively responding to the incident, okay? It's not like we're, we're crapping our pants and we're having an adrenaline dump because we're under attack right now, okay? Our threat intelligence score is up to 11%, which is good. We're only halfway through the game. Did you, did, I, I missed it. Did you do um, gather forensics on that box we detected? I have to activate IR first. That's right, that's right. Yep. So IR mode has now been activated. We can actually, uh-oh, several compromised assets. Jeez. Okay, so our entire network segment is- We predicted is, this, uh, though. We predicted was this. It? Yeah, we did predict this, we, This, which is why we put EDR on these systems as a priority, right? So hopefully, chat, you're following along with us and, and uh, you know, vibing on this. Okay, so now, Clint, my, okay- this is something else that you guys are not going to, this, this is a unpopular opinion. Okay. I am a CISO. I have three employees. So I'm thinking I'm a smaller organization. As I laid out at the beginning, my goal is to outlast the storm using this framework in real life, in real life, you wouldn't really gather forensics. Like if you're a smaller business and I know that this is a less than popular take, but what am I going to do with the forensics? Right. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna... so, the problem is, yeah. I mean, I would, there's a lot like, of stuff you can gather forensic on. You could really get that threat intelligence score up, but at this point, you know, are you really going for a threat intelligence win here? Or are you trying to really actually secure your environment? In real exactly. life, that's just part of the game, right? In real life, gathering forensics isn't going to help you or your organization. That's just a win condition of the game. But in real life, um, you need to clean your assets. You need to clean. You need to get secure. And by the way, let me say that the whole reason why you have so many assets compromised is because things like social engineering and two-factor authentication are so late in this model. Yeah, exactly. I just, I, I just wanted to be real with people that in reality, you clean the asset and, and move on. Maybe you grab some IOCs and look to see if there were other things compromised. But for the most part, you're, you're moving on. All right. So it's going to yeah. take one person two days. So let's clean all these assets. I'm curious. Do we have EDR in the, the process control network, like the, the engineering workstation, that EW30? Because that's more critical than those workstations. Uh, let me see. Oh, I'm in IR right now, so I can't. Yeah, no, no just go click on, just go click on that. You have, uh, well, I guess we can't tell in the tour out of IR. It, it definitely, yeah, well, all... it's definitely in a couple of these places. Like I was prioritizing over here before I went over here. But all right, so let's let's end the turn here. Josh Mason wants a higher MSP option. We can higher barricade cyber solutions option. All right, let's go. We do have higher contractors kind of in here a little bit. I don't know. We're, we're going to add like higher, higher contractors options. We will. It's on the roadmap. So Richard, Richard B. Colm, who also, hey, Richard, uh, thanks for the squad support. I saw you sign up recently, so I genuinely appreciate that. Uh, Richard says, might actually trash some of those assets. What's the cost benefit of keeping them? So it's interesting that you asked that. Check this out. Oh, I'm already cleaning the so cleaning the assets is a thousand dollars. Replacing the assets is five thousand dollars. So there in the game there is a five x cost of replacing the asset. But if you think in real life, like especially with the chip shortage in the supply chain, like 
replacing a laptop, a compromised workstation or something, it's not as trivial as just go grab another one off the shelf. Like it, it can be expensive. It can be time consuming. And again, as I mentioned before, like for the most part, when I'm protecting my organization, I'm not thinking, um, nation state threat actors installed some like master boot record malware. I'm thinking this end user basically clicked on a fish, maybe install a crypto miner, maybe running some PowerShell or something. Maybe the, the one endpoint attempted to run ransomware and it succeeded or it failed, whatever it was. I kind of cleanse it, maybe roll it back to a known good state, maybe push uh, the gold load image to it and move on. It's, it's very, very uncommon for me to suspect um, Really, only if I clean the asset and it continued to be a problem would I then replace the asset. But typically, um, a re-imaging of the device is is perfectly fine. All right. All right, so we are... Now, Clint, here's a question just from the game perspective. My asset cleaning is going to complete next turn. It takes one turn to deactivate IR. If I click deactivate IR now... Will it resolve at the beginning of my next turn in the order that I want it to? Clean, 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 deactivate. Yeah, yeah. The things you put in the queue first should be the first to execute. Okay, cool. Well, I'm going to deactivate IR. Now, guys, there is a risk I'm taking here. If I deactivate IR and more assets get compromised or my cleaning of assets isn't successful, then I run the risk of... Um, of having to spend a whole no a whole nother turn activating IR again, but it's okay for me. I want to I want to run the risk. Somebody asked if you have backups on those. I do not believe you did any backups, uh, made any restore points on those assets. I did. I have not done backups yet. No, that because it is right here control 11 we're getting close to getting backups in place but we're still focused on edr according to the cis um framework all right so asset clean hopefully that means three assets cleaned okay cool all right so we dealt with our first real incident and you know we've we've cleaned the things and we've reactivated ir so now let's go back to doing our following the framework right we're doing edr all right, so we're going to put EDR on this guy since this is our um, uh, in our ICS network. And we're going to put EDR on these devices since these devices are relatively close to these devices. Now, Clint, here's a question. Uh, here's a philosophical question. The control in CIS 18 says malware defenses. And we're thinking 13 is network monitoring and defense. This is a network device. So you could argue that this isn't malware defenses. This is actually network monitoring and defense. So I, if I just prioritize yeah. the endpoints, right? Well, so on network devices, obviously there's there's very few malware that, that attacks network devices. When, they, when you talk about right. malware defense, they're mostly talking about PCs uh, mm -hmm. and things like that. And I think they're mostly talking about um, things like antivirus, uh, application whitelisting, which we don't have in the game, by the way, um, and things like that. And I would not consider threat monitoring to be malware defense so much. I don't, I don't think monitoring is a defense at all. Monitoring is awareness, not defense. It's situational mm -hmm. awareness. I agree. So my plan is to just put EDR on the workstations and servers um, which is one, two, three more devices. And then we'll move forward with our controls. All right, so let's end the turn. We're doing good, <laughs> so people. They're, they're saying you have no, I, I guess what they mean by trash those machines is get rid of those machines and replace them with other words. In other words, replace the asset. I'm assuming you don't mean trash the assets and leave the workers with nothing to work on. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we've got another compromised asset gonna have to activate ir again let's see where it is oh, All right, okay. so it's it just didn't, uh... yeah so this same system is is hosed right now so let's let's do this um we're going to activate ir which is going to take a full turn so let's put some stuff in the queue 
We're going to update antivirus since this machine continues to get popped. Um, deploy USB security. Um, I'm going to deploy USB security only because... No, I don't want to do that. I'm going to follow the framework, okay? Um, <laughs> you try to be a CISO. I know. All right, so I'm going to continue hardening these things. Um just because they're in the they're in the realm of getting popped, right? So I don't like that. I, I have a little bit of nausea. I, I hope it doesn't come back to bite me that I committed one resource for two turns. So if I need that resource back, that's going to be a problem. See how my resource is two out of three because I got one committed. Um. Okay, guys. So let's go ahead and replace the asset. Let's trash those assets, y'all. Right? And see if that cleans it up. Obviously, the uh, re-imaging did not work on this machine. And let's use this one. Can we do anything with this one? Oh, God, I should have committed. Damn it. I should have committed um, a resource to do something for two turns. All right. Oh, well. So this is our first... Um, misutilization of a resource. It's all because of IR. How long does it take to do replace asset? It takes one turn. So I'm going to deactivate IR in parallel. Um, no, thinking that, you know, the asset replace is going to be a fine activity. So let's, right? Okay, let's go. I know, Anna Lynn, how, how dangerous of me thinking like management. Okay, here we go. Asset replaced. We got a gold star for it. Very nice. And then our IR should be deactivated, which it is. Okay, guys. So we're doing good. We are um, going to continue doing our EDR. We're almost done with that, I feel. Let's see. Um. All right, so we're just doing this on endpoints. So this is perfect. Yeah, we only have two endpoints left because that VPN one disappeared. Okay, let's go back to our... We're, we're done with this. Data recovery. So let's get our backups going. Uh, where's our backups? Create backup process. $5,000. Oh, shit. All right, so we don't have enough money <laughs> because... Do you, Okay. Do you know what costs five thousand dollars? Creating IR backups. Do you know what also costs five thousand dollars? Replacing Carl's workstation that got infected again. Wait, what costs five thousand? It costs five thousand dollars to do a backup or just implement the backup systems. Create the backup processes. Yeah, that's because you're putting the whole thing in place. But once it's in place, you can just do backups for free. Yeah. No, I know. My problem is that if I hadn't had to have paid five thousand dollars to replace Carl's machine, oh, oh, I would have yeah. five thousand dollars to do my actual job. So this is why I give Carl a hard time all the time because now I can't invest in my security program because I don't have any money. So now I got to go request budget, which is going to take three turns. Ugh. Carl. Okay. So hey, Carl. I know. All right. So. We have now requested budget. Hopefully we get it. And we've got no assets available. And we're going to have two assets next turn. So let's just kind of map out what we're doing. According to the framework, can we skip data recovery, network infrastructure management, and network monitoring and defense? Um, okay. Trying to wonder if how much of the network sensors because I got five hundred bucks. They're two thousand, so I don't have enough money for that either. Ugh. All right, we're kind of hamstrung, guys. Let's update antivirus uh, at least next turn. We can do some free stuff. So you know, it's interesting. <laughs> Go cloud. It's funny. CIS. 18 doesn't have anything about requesting budget like when you need when so do you start with the budget for all this if you don't if you're not able to do all this do you request budget to do this 
or do you have to wait until you're already compromised to, to request budget for more of this? So that, that there's the, the ultimate question of when do I request budget and how do I most effectively get it from management? Yes. And I just love some of these comments. Okay. So, uh, Muhammad brought up a good point, right? It's talking about, um, oh, wait, that's the wrong comment. Sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. Ah, we're fighting each other. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. I was trying to do it for yeah, you. Yeah. Replacing the <laughs> asset was costly only because it got popped twice. I felt like I was wasting money cleaning the asset. Um, you know, I could have made the decision if I had looked forward at like what my, my data recovery and processes were going to cost, I could have done that. Um, so that was kind of a mistake, but that's fine. Um, I also love Bob, Bob, <laughs> if the framework allowed for better implementation, none of this would be happening. Blame the process, not Carl. Yes. Listen to me, classic CISO, just pointing fingers at end users. Like that's something that information security people do all the time, right? If I didn't have any end users, I wouldn't have any problems. Holy crap, our AD server's down. I was, I was about to tell you that. I was like, did, did you not, I thought you already noticed it. <laughs> no. Okay, hold on one second. I'm sorry. As I, die, I, I die, devolve into just complaining, my, my, one of my most important assets is, act, is actively com uh, compromised. So this is not good. So while you do, while you fix that, I have a comment. I'm finding this very interesting that red versus blue is able to validate or invalidate a specific uh, standards process or at least ordering of things. Mm hmm. It is interesting. Let me do this. And activate IR. Okay. I'm stunned. My PNL is not going down. Well, I don't. Right. I think I, that there's. I think that the adversary stuck in your user and your server networks. I don't think that they've actually made it over to your uh, process control network. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that you started hardening there first. Yes, that's a good point. So, guys, check this out. I have zero dollars, <laughs> so my my choices are limited, right? The <laughs> only thing I can do right now is disconnect from the network, which sucks because it's my AD controller. But you know what? I don't have a choice. They could be exfiltrating data. Budget. They could be doing some, what's that? So request that budget. <laughs> yeah, well, the budget, our budget request is in, is in, uh, Okay. it's in, we're waiting for the board meeting. That's another reality. You can't just get emergency budget typically unless like, well, if AD was actively compromised, you may not be able to get immediate budget, but in reality, you typically have to wait for the next board meeting. Okay. I can do one thing to that's free. Oh no, I'm in IR. Okay. How long does this take? Oh, I have, I can't do anything. I'm going to disconnect it from the network and I'm going to hope and I hope I get budget next turn. If I don't get budget, we're screwed. Um, another compromise asset detected. Where? Oh, Where's my budget? Oh yeah. Really? 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 What? How did... We're active... Listen. Listen to me. Yeah. We are actively under attack right now. Our active directory, which controls everything, is compromised. I need a couple bucks in order to get this situation remedied. Either let's call in the insurance company and get some money from there, or give me some money now like push it into Q3, push it into FY23. I don't care. Give me budget now. This is ridiculous. I'm ugh. All right. So now we've got to request more budget. Got to put the, the same, the same PowerPoint together. Ugh. You're getting spicy. I, I am. I'm frustrated, Clint. Like of all the times not to give me budget, they gave me $10,000 for no reason. My third day on the job. Yeah, the 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 algorithm that, that doesn't make sense because I'll tell you right now, here's a game secret from the developer. The algorithm does prioritize percentage of success based on the fact that if you're compromised, you should have a better chance of getting budget. Now that said, you probably just got a really bad random roll. Just the yeah. unlucky random roll. I can't do anything <clears throat> right now with no money. Like my analysts are sitting on their hands. Yeah, because we do the way that we simulate unforeseen circumstances in the game. 
is by having randomness in a lot of the the chances, and that's affected your your randomness meter goes back and forth based on things you do in the game. So randomness simulates unforeseen frustrations. You know what? Maybe the CFO was out sick or something. Maybe. Maybe I can just flip out in peace. I, I'm like literally like my I where our AD is under attack, and I sent my analysts home. That's what happened here. <laughs> did you did you re request? Just re request. Clint. Yes. Twice. They told me to figure it out. Oh, They're I missed that. Money. This oh, is ridiculous. Your management team is uh, needs to be fired. Your Seriously. Financial... Oh, fuck. I didn't even request budget that time. Oh. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Crop Duster, you're funny. And Christopher Ward, I saw what you wrote. That's funny. You guys, you guys are brutal. The All right, here we is, go. The system is literally failing you. The the, the process of the, the the standard is failing you. Management is failing you. This is. I I just want to know, like, I'm just gonna put a a, a request in, or I'm gonna check the change log if there was something specifically put in against me when I'm playing. I'm curious. No. <laughs> Although that is a good idea. You should have never made me think of that. This is ridiculous. Oh, budget acquired. Thank you. How, how generous of you. Third All right. So now we got some budget. Let's deactivate IR. Let's reconnect. Or uh, we have to clean the asset. Um, actually, let's, let's replace. The, well... Let's just clean the asset. It takes, well, no, replacing it takes one turn. We just got five grand. I made a big stink. I flipped out in a board meeting about give me the money. So <laughs> doing this as soon as possible is the right thing to do. I'm going to deactivate IR also. Yeah, I don't know. Clint, AD being disconnected doesn't hurt PL. Does that make sense? Um, is it hurting it at all? It should hurt it a little bit, but I mean, it's it's not an active production. I mean, yeah, um, either A, um, so we put in a lot of thought into reasoning about some things affect PL and some things don't. Um, the active directory server, it should, I think, maybe because that affects people being able to log in and do it. So there's probably a calculation that's off there somewhere. Yeah. My deactivate IR did not take, unfortunately. Um, so I'll deactivate it again. And I'll click it down here as well. I've, I've had this challenge in the past where IR doesn't deactivate when I want it to. All right. Let's end the turn. I can't believe. Dude. We, this is like ignorance is bliss. Why is my IR not deactivating? Oh, your IR is not deactivating and you've done it twice? Yeah. Here, I can tell you one thing. Um the reason why the Active Directory server was not affecting PNL is because it was it was compromised, but it was not denied. It was not down. The, the network connection was not down. Or, or actually, you do have it disconnected now. PNL is not going down, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that that might be a bug there that we need to look at. Here's another bug. I've deactivated IR three turns in a row, and it's still not deactivated, which is okay now because this guy's infected, but. I'm going to try to deactivate again. <laughs> okay, so it deactivated in the middle of cleaning this asset. I don't even care. I'm going to let this end user just deal, okay? I'm more interested in my CIS 18. Because, guys, be honest with you, this right here, this happens all the time. This right here, this is a reality. End users get compromised. Endpoints get compromised. Okay. So we've done uh, up to 10. We want to do uh, um, backup and recovery, right? So let's do data recovery. Okay. <clears throat> and we still have one person left over. Yep. Working on the backups now. Network monitoring defense. Okay. So let's do our network sensors. 
So did it actually say it was failed in the log or it just wasn't deactivating IR? It, it wasn't deactivating. I'll pull up the logs in a second though, if you want. I'm going to drop a network sensor here because this is where all the bad stuff was happening. Um, actually, I'm going to drop it here because our AD server, our IT infrastructure is more valuable than our endpoints right now. And here's the action log, Clint. Nothing yeah. No, okay, yeah, okay. I wonder, so for what it's worth, I did not reconnect my AD to the network. I had missed that. And it seemed to help when I reconnected it, deactivating my IR. Hmm, okay. Possibly. So guys, we're at 46 turns. We're continuing to implement this. Um... Yeah. Chat, you guys are got jokes today. I love it. A lot of you can tell there's a lot of people who have a lot of um, gray in their hair uh, chiming in on this chat. A lot of people with uh, scars, lessons learned. All right, so we've installed. Ooh, loiter removed. Very nice. I'm not even going for a threat intelligence score. And we might win that way. It would be interesting. Oh, cleaning the asset didn't work. That's fine. We're creating the backup processes. Let's continue doing network sensors. I just confirmed with my developers. If you have manually disconnected something from the network, it will not let you uh, deactivate IR until you've reconnected. Because as long as you have something disconnected, you are doing that because of incident response. Oh, thank you, InfoSec Brett. All right, my AD is popped again. Let's go ahead and activate IR. I I literally replaced AD, not cleaned it, replaced it. So let's do this. System backups implemented, IR activated. Okay, let's do this. <clears throat> mm, I guess let's replace the asset again. And then the only thing we can do is do uh, deploy um, security. By the way, <laughs> this is for better or worse, just so you guys know, I would definitely not be going to the CIO immediately and telling them that I'm replacing the AD server again, like a few days later for another $5,000. Um, there's something inherently wrong here, but you shouldn't be replacing assets that quickly. Um, it's expensive and it's not the best practice. All right. So let's, let's do this. Okay. Let's go. Uh, Spock created this game. Yes. Okay. Asset replaced. That's good. Let's reconnect it. To, oh, it was never disconnected from the network. So I should have deactivated IR fool. Damn. Wasted my turn there. Okay, looks like we're going to survive the storm, guys. All right, so IR is deactivated. All our assets are looking good. Let's see how we're doing on the SANS 20. We've got 1 through 13 done, right? Um, did I get all of the network sensors? One more network sensor, and then 14 is security awareness and training. So let's do that even though I've made my position well-known earlier that we should have done that sooner. Okay, let's end the turn. And we win, proving for a fact that the CIS security critical controls framework can be useful in a practical environment, right? <clears throat> not only, I argue. Not only well, we just simulated it, Clint. No, but it, but you had tons of now. Maybe the process of cleaning and stuff like that worked. However, it depends. We won the game, but I do think that this simulation also proved that you would have had a better defensive framework to start with had some of those things like cybersecurity awareness training um, or two-factor authentication been moved up further in the CIS 18. I think that's one thing that it did show. I agree. And if we do do the CIS controls again, uh, because I'm going to try to put a whole program in place and outlast, I might move this to 
um, eight, you know, 80 turns and, and, and give it the ability. Cause um, from our framework perspective, we got to control 14. So we didn't do 15 through 18. Now service provider management, this, this could definitely be like um, the ICS certification stuff, dealing with the vendors for ICSs. Um, this incident response one, yeah, we could have done that. And there is a pen testing one. So there is more opportunity for, the, for us to implement the CIS 18 critical security controls. But I think from an exercise perspective and a simulation perspective, I thought that this was useful. I think, yeah, um, looking at the red team there, I think is, it tells your story, right? Like, I mean, they're just, the red team really wasn't able to do much. Yeah, some things got compromised. You have to figure always same things are going to get compromised. And and yes, we. It, it, I would say the CIS 18 can be enhanced by moving things around. But I think looking at what the red team did, it absolutely proved that it was effective overall. Yeah, let's see what the red team, <clears throat> this is what our environment looked like. This is what the red teams look like. They were remote. Um, they had our SIM, they had our AD. So they were fully involved in our, um, in this network segment. They were nowhere near over here. So, you know, yeah. as You're, a CISO right. manufacturing facility, I feel pretty good about it. So absolutely. Awesome. Well, chat i hope you enjoyed um hanging out with us and playing if you want to see um us do cis again maybe um a different framework maybe with more turns etc we can do that um i do want to share i should have done this like while we were talking if you guys want to try out the platform yourself game over man <laughs> if you guys want to try the platform out yourself this is an exclusive offer for this stream only um let me drop it in chat okay this right here is a code that will give you, it says it can't post to all channels. So you're going to have to come to YouTube, I guess, guys, or DM me, yeah. right? This, this code right here will give you 30 days of full access to the professional platform at ThreatGen. Um, and you can play the game. You can get your scores, your ranks. You can try it out. You can play against me. If you're, uh, if you catch me while I'm in there, uh, which I'm in there all the time now. Um, and after 30 days, it's no commitment. So it's not like it auto renews you and, and we're trying to like hook you. Into you don't have to you. enter your credit card or anything. Yeah. But if you do like it, obviously um, you can sign up and there, there's other stuff in there besides the platform, right? There's some educational content that's coming or that has started coming that I'm working on and Clint is working on. So there's a lot going on there. So this will expire at 11.59 p.m. tonight. So it's good for right now only. Go check it out. Um, Carrie, this is a free 30-day uh, invitation to the platform, okay? All right, so ping me if you want it. Uh, I definitely appreciate it. And yeah, Clint, any final thoughts before we say goodbye to everybody? No, I think I already said my final thoughts about the CIS. I think it's it was effective keeping... Uh, the, the ICS, the control systems, uh, safe. It can be improved upon. I hope everybody, everybody learns something. And yeah, go take advantage of that uh, that free. And when we say it, it, it expires, you have until midnight tonight to use the code. But then you have 30 free days after that. No strings attached. Absolutely. All right, guys. Like I said, we are doing this every Wednesday at 1130 Um you know, send ideas over. If you want me to try something, Josh Mason suggested the CIS control. Um, sometimes I play the AI. Sometimes Clint plays. Sometimes me, I play against Clint. I can play against Josh. I can use different frameworks. Um, we can I'm use sore. different methodologies. I'm still What's sore. It? I'm still sore oh, about, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, Jerry beat me last time and I'm sore about it still. So that we're going to do a rematch soon. Absolutely. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this stream. Thanks for hanging out with us. I genuinely appreciate it. All the Simply Cyber community people, all the ThreatGen community people. If you're not already subscribed to ThreatGen's YouTube channel, um, do me a favor, jump over there, just hit the sub button. Um, I'm not always pairing ThreatGen's feeds into Simply Cybers. It just depends. Um, so if you, if you like the ThreatGen stuff, if you want to learn more about this platform and about opportunities that we're offering and, you know, events that we're scheduling and stuff like that subscribe to the threat gen 
YouTube channel and you will get that information. Yep. The link the sub is button on, down some, there. So yeah, well, and, and some people are saying they can't see the, the link because it's in chat. That's why, uh, oh, I put, so the, I guess you can, can LinkedIn people see the, the link that we put on the screen right now? Are you seeing the link on the screen yeah. or no? Link, LinkedIn people should be able to see the, the, the screen. Feed. Yeah. Yep. So, and if you can't just ping me on LinkedIn and say you watched this stream and I'll give you the code, right? This yeah. is a, this is an exclusive code for people Wait. who are, who hung out and watched the stream with us. Hold on just a second. I have an idea on how to get it. If we can copy, uh, if we can copy the text, put the text in a capture. Uh, Jerry, take that link and put it in the cap uh, in the captions and throw it on screen as a caption. Okay. How's that? Yeah. You guys see that, that on LinkedIn now? Um, you didn't I mean, it's hard. Up. It's hard to just read it, but there it is. <clears throat> can you see that? Yep. You should see that on your screen now, even LinkedIn users on the screen underneath us right here. Yep. And cracking me up there. Maybe I don't know why they couldn't see it on the stream, but because you're posting the from the uh, yeah, for some reason, even though you're you're putting the user's chat on the screen or whatever, it's coming from YouTube, so not everybody can see it. Everybody should be able to see this. Okay. Okay, cool. Now people are seeing it. Sweet. All right. And uh, yeah, Karen signed up. Thanks, Karen. Um, again, if, if you guys like Josh Mason and I are going to play heads up, but if you want to play heads up, I'll, I'll schedule some time. Like I said, I'll be doing this at 1130 on Wednesdays, but I will be scheduling some regular like game sessions, right? Like not office hours, but game sessions that I'm going to broadcast and stuff like that. So we can have a good time. We can have fun. No stream sniping people. All right. And no, no, uh, no dropping hints for people, no matter how much you enjoy and want to see them win. You can find the actual link in the Threat Gen channel. Yep, that's right. Okay, guys, thanks so much. This is going to do it for us. Clint, enjoy the rest of your, um, your, your, your conference in Miami. You, you poor soul having to deal with <laughs> Miami. And uh, we'll, we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. At least for on Simply Cyber. So, yep. All right. Let me send you off, okay? It hold on. I'm sorry, Clint. It's the it's the threat gen one or is it the red blue one? It's this one right here. I'll do it.